today we're going to attempt to show you how to brew beer and to show you how easy it is and we're hoping to take some of the myths away from beer because all the brewer speak tends to put people off. We're going to show you how easy it is and what the actual processes are. A couple of things you'll need essential for brewing beer from grain is you'll need a boiler and a mash tun. The mash tun is basically I'm using a cool box because it needs to keep the grain at a certain temperature. The filter inside the cool box is a simple square of copper pipe with some slits cut in it with a hacksaw. And that fits inside and then on the outside is a tap. I also use a little spout that I've made just so that that sits below the base of the boiler and helps with the siphon effect towards the end of the runnings. Uh, the boiler. The boiler I'm using, I've got these elements here and they just simply unscrew and pop in. And that's your element done. The hop strainer I'm using I've got a simple bit of flexible pipe where I've squashed the end down with a hammer and I've dri drilled a series of holes on the bottom and the two sides. Got a little 90 degree bend. You'll notice nothing's fixed. And that fits onto the back of the tap and sits in the gully of the boiler like so. Again, we have another spout which sits on the front, exits below the base of the boiler and that helps with the siphon effect towards the end of the run-ins. Now if, when this is all in position What we've got here is we've got a hot liquor tank. Now this is just basically here, it's got two elements inside it, it's got a simmer stat on one of the elements, and this is just simply here to bring the volume of water up to the temperature required for the whole process. Uh, it's a bit of a luxury, but it does make, when you start brewing to volumes, it makes things a lot easier. All mine is is a plastic bucket, two elements, and a tap on the front. I've also incorporated a little tiny 12 volt pump the reason I've used that one is because the flow rate is about 6 litres a minute. So when we come to sparging later on, it helps with the sparging process if you're nice and slow and deliberate. But we'll come to that later on. This is my basic setup. I've got my mash tun sat above the boiler, which in turn is sat at the right height above where my fermenter would go for collecting the water at the end of the process. Because I'm brewing, I'm going to attempt to brew a 30 litre batch today. What with the pumps and the sparge arms and everything, my dead space, etc., I'm going to need about 55 litres for the whole process. So I've filled up 55 litres in the boiler, or the hot liquor tank. It's up to temperature. Take a final reading with the, hydro uh, with the thermometer. I want to be aiming somewhere around 80 degrees, 80, 82 degrees. Right, we've, uh, we've heated the temperature of the water up to about 80, 82 degrees. Everybody's setup will be different, but the optimum degrees, the optimum temperature for mashing your grains is 66. Now I know I'm going to lose a few degrees pumping the water from the hot liquor tank into the mash tun. I'm going to lose a few degrees just as the temperature settles out and it heats up the walls and the copper in the mash tun and everything. And I know that to get 66 degrees with the temperature of the grains, I'm going to lose a few more degrees. Uh, all of this comes with practice and it will probably take three or four brews for you to actually truly know your own setup. So now I'm just going to move the transfer the water across, tap yep. on, and I'm simply transferring the water across via the little 12 volt pump. So if you want to go and have a look in there. Brewing's very high tech, I just use a simple torch so that I can see the liquid level and I can gauge how much I've actually pumped in. I'm going to pump in about 20 litres, I tend to mash at a ratio of 3 to 1, so that's 3 litres of liquid to 1 kilogram of grain. Yeah. 
We've transferred the water across. We know it's nice and hot. I'll just move that out of the way. We'll take a quick temperature reading of the liquor that's inside the mash tun. So it was 82 in the hot liquor tank. It's now settling out somewhere around 86 or 87 degrees. 86 and a half degrees. Yep. So, if we cover the, put the lid on the mash tun, and we'll just leave it for about 10 minutes while the temperature settles down. What it's doing is it's, it's heating up all the copper pipe work that's inside there, it's heating up the side walls, and it's also settling out at a temperature. Now I need to mash in, or stir the grains in, at about 74 to 75 degrees because I will lose probably eight or nine degrees in the process due to the temperature of the grains, due to the volume of the grains I'm putting in. So I'm just gonna take a quick temperature reading. I wanna be aiming for about 74 to 75 degrees. All right, that's settled out at bang on 75 degrees. So now we're going to dough in the grains. Brewers speak for stirring in the grains and making a nice thick porridge. Mm. Right, it's a pity we haven't got smelly vision here because a lovely smell of Horlicks coming out of here. A nice deliberate slow mash to make sure that you don't end up with any dry clumps in there. Um, it's about six and a half kilos. It's actually six, 6.46 kilograms of grain that's going in. So it's gonna be nice and strong. Somewhere around the five and a half percent when it's finished. Right, we've just finished doughing in. Slow old job, bit of an arm ache now. I just think of 30 litres of lovely beer at the end of it. Quick temperature reading. Remember 66 degrees is the optimum. I actually prefer mashing at about 67 degrees because at the end of the day I like a slightly drier beer. So if you mash at 67 you'll get a slightly drier beer due to more fermentable sugar. If you smash slightly under 66, you'll get a slightly sweeter beer due to less fermentable sugar. Right, the thermometer has settled out at 67 and 3 quarters degrees Celsius. So I'm happy with that. Let's put the lid on. We mashed in at two minutes past 10. I'm only gonna be mashing for an hour. Um, so end of mash will be 11 o'clock or two minutes past 11. It's not an exact science, but it's close enough. Right, so we've timed the mash. It's sat inside the mash tun and the insulation properties should have kept it at the right temperature. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm only doing a, an hour mash. So the lid comes off. Just out of curiosity, we take a temperature reading. Still reading about 66 and a quarter degrees Celsius, so I've actually lost maybe a degree over an hour mash. Um, putting my sparge arm in place. We're now ready to start collecting the wort. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm collecting the first few litres coming out the mash tun. Basically the first few litres are going to come out full of bits of grain and the flour and everything that comes out from when I was mashing in. So wait till it starts to run clear. Usually takes three, two, three litres or so. There we go. So that's now running clear. And we start sparging. Sparging is basically rinsing the grains out. Um, when I've mashed it in, 
there's going to be little pockets of sugar that's inside the grains. All the sparging is doing is to help rinse it out. Now you want a nice and slow, deliberate sparge. So try and match up, match up your flow rate coming in, which is just a case of slowing down, opening down, opening or closing the tap, so that you're about an even, even rate there. Once I've built up a head of water on top of the grains, I'm just going to recirculate this nice and gently over the top so that it doesn't disturb the grain bed. Nice and gently. There we go. So that's been returned to the grain. The sparge is actually rinsing out all of the trapped sugar, so as it percolates through, it's just dragging all of the extra sugar. You can see that the colour's taking on from the grain with the sweet wort we've got. Now that the elements are actually covered over, I'm going to start heating it up. It just saves a bit of time as we start to heat it up as it's filling up. That's just a simple case of turning an element on. I'll wait a few minutes because the, the other element I've got is slightly higher up in the bucket. <coughs> The grain bed is drying out and just the last few dregs are being siphoned out from the tap. That'll just keep going now till it's dry. Um, I've taken into account all of the volumes with how much I need, how much I need to boil, how much I'm going to lose for evaporation, how much the grains are going to absorb and I've pretty much got my volume right as the total liquor so that at the end of the process I've collected about 40 litres, I'm aiming for 30 litres, it's going to have quite a vigorous boil, plus also I'm using a fair old few hops in there. Uh, take into account the trub and the whole process is going to lose probably 10 litres for this next hour and a half when it's boiling. And we should end up with 30 litres of a lovely liquid gold beer. Uh, we're just starting to actually come up to the boil now. Um, if you have a look in there, you'll see that the, the boiling water is just starting to come across. Um, we'll just let that foam dissipate. That's the hot break forming. Uh, that's a lot of the proteins and a lot of the nasty stuff coming out as it's starting to boil. Um, there's nothing wrong with putting the hops in now, but I tend to like a, a nice clear surface to it. So. That won't be many minutes before that's ready to go. Give it a bit of a stir and fold it around. This recipe is the Exmoor Gold and it calls for uh, Challenger and Fuggles for the full 90 minute boil. Um, there's about 19 grams of Fuggles I think and about 28 grams of Challenger in there. So there's two hot varieties in there. When you get yourself to a rolling boil you just literally chuck them in Give them a bit of a stir, make a note of the time, 11.44. Mmm, I so wish you could smell this, this is fantastic. And now we have the hops, hops in. The bitterness from the hops or the alpha acids will only go into solution for a prolonged bit boiling time, usually about 60 minutes or so, but I'm boiling the, the recipe calls for a 90 minute boil. The alpha acids inside the hops, like I say, will only go into solution via a process called isomerization, which is when it's prolonged boiling. For all intents and purposes, the essential acids will go into solution then. It's that essential oils or alpha acids that actually give the beer its bitterness. It also acts as a preservative, and if you could smell this, it is superb. Oh, it clears the sinuses. Have a look at that. Like I said earlier, get your cleaning up done as soon as you can. It makes things so much easier if you clean as you go. Time to lean, time to clean. Remember that. Right, well we've got 
We've got about four or five minutes to go before an hour and a quarter has been boiling. We're now getting to the point where we're ready to start the next stage. So first off, I'm connecting up my immersion chiller, which is basically a bit of copper pipe. A 10 mil copper pipe, what they call a micro bore, which is easy to roll around. I originally rolled it around a glass DJ just to form it. I then stretched it to eke it out a little bit. I put a 90 degree elbow on there and I've got a couple of braided hoses fitted on with some quick fit connectors, some metal hose lock connectors. One end is connected to the water supply. The other end is just connected to a standard hose pipe just to run the water away. This is the second batch of hops that are going to be going in. Uh, the first batch of hops that went in get isomerized and then they add the bitterness to the beer. They also act as a preservative. They're boiled for the full 90 minutes. This last batch of hops, I've got two varieties in here. I've got Goldings and Fuggles. Uh, I'm following the recipes in there. I've also got my copper finings, which is in the form of a Protoflot tablet. These go in, these will give the beer its aroma and its flavour. Well, mainly its flavour. Um, the Protoflot tablet goes in to help it, it, copper finings to help coagulate all the proteins and everything can help them fall out as the beer is being cooled. Uh, we're about ready for them to go in. So when the timing's right, yep, there we go. So they just literally go in, give them a quick stir. And they help the aroma and the flavour of the beer. At this time, my wort chiller just simply goes into the boiling wort and that is just there for the boiling liquid to sterilise the copper. Right, we've come to the end of the boil. We've turned the heat off. I'm just going to put the lid loosely over the top now. Just let no flies get in there and we can uh, start chilling the wort. You don't need the water flowing very fast. Obviously the slower, the slower it flows, the more heat it's going to absorb as it goes through the copper pipe. And like I say, I'm collecting the runoff water in the fermenter because I'm going to use it for sterilising. The uh, as it's cooling down, as the water's running through it, I mean, it, it, it's crystal. God, we've made beer, fantastic. But uh, all the trub and everything's all starting to coagulate together. There's these little flocks that are forming. They're all starting to form and settle out as it's cooling down. It's just great, it's beer. There we go. Just another half an hour. And it'll be cool enough. Yeah, we're getting there. It's amazing how you build up asbestos hands when you're brewing beer. Bless. After rinsing out, rinsing and sterilising, I'm just washing the, uh, the sterilant out of the bucket now, making sure it's well, well rinsed. Right, we're ready to rock and roll. And we've, what we've got here is beer coming out of it. Have a look inside there. There's a bit of trog comes out of it to start with, which is all the, the some bits of hot debris and stuff coming out of the filter and that. And then it starts to run clear. All that debris tends to get um, settled out when it's fermenting anyway. Right, I've now got a sample of the beer and we're going to moment of truth it. Mm. 
we've got a hydrometer reading of 1.051. And now we can also taste this. And... Quite bitter, quite sweet. We should have had a reading of 1.047. But what we actually ended up with is a reading of 1.051. So when we can convert that into layman's terms, instead of having a beer at 4.7%, we're going to have a beer near a 5%, 5.1, that sort of strength. That's a bit of a bonus. Volume wise, we've got about 30 litres. We made beer. Yeah. Always puts a smile on my face, this does. Right, well, today we've made some beer. Um, we've made it in the time honoured way. We've mashed the grains, we've boiled it up with the hops and everything. And basically, what we've now got is we've now got a fermenter full of wort. So if you were a kit brewer, what you would be doing is you would be mixing the kit up and getting to this stage. As an all grain brewer, what I've done is I've made my own wort up from scratch. I've had total control over what I make, what I decided to brew, what malts, what ingredients, what flavours. You've got total control over how you do it. And as you can see, it's on very Heath Robinson equipment, but it works. It's simple. So if you ever want have a go, ever want any ingredients, copper kettle, give us a ring. You'll be making your own beer in no time. Right, I'm going to take this home and get it fermented. Cheers, folks.